the final award of the evening, the British Urban Film Festival Honorary Award. Now, to present this award, I'm about to welcome two amazing actors to this stage. Not only, well, oh, they have nearly 60 years experience combined. Not only do they share longevity, <laughs> combined, that's what I did say combined. <laughs> combined, right? But not only do they share longevity. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're a match later, but nearly, that's a great mistake, too, right? <laughs> but not only do they share I'm, I'm only fat now. <laughs> in the film industry. They have co-starred in the same movie more than once and they have also previously received the Buff Honorary Award as well. And I was there both times. But yeah, um, and <laughs> I was there once. No, you were there once. Yes. But yeah, um, and tonight they come together again to share in the celebration of honouring a man that they've both worked with, that I've worked with, that literally like, has paved the way for everyone, that literally everyone that's diverse that works in the industry and has a career in the industry and um and he's been front and center of uk film and television for the past 20 years and counting ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the stage 2016 buff honoree ward johnson who and 2017 buff honoree ashley waters We'll not let the grey fool you. <laughs> right, um, esteemed guests, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be standing here with you this evening. I first started coming to Bath in 2009, 10 years ago. Um, in that same year, the, uh, the British Urban Film Festival screened a film which I started and produced called Disoriented Generation. Um, but 10 years on, it's not enough as we all know, to be just an actor. Several actors have trodden this path, including the very first winner of the uh, Buff Honorary Award, a certain Richard Pryor. Tonight's recipient of the 2019 British Urban Film Festival Honorary Award is not only an actor, but a screenwriter, producer, comic book writer, director, business owner, mentor, ambassador, and a BAFTA winner. Tonight, Noel Clark will become the latest recipient of an award that only four other people, including two here, <laughs> have had the privilege of receiving. You just got my next line. You want to keep on that? I was one of those four people back in 2007. <laughs> <laughs> I remember saying at the time that I hope getting an honorary award that it didn't mean that it was the end of my career, which up until that point had spanned 25 years. Obviously, I'm still in work and loving every minute of, it, of my time working on new projects like Top Boy, obviously, and uh, the show we both star in, Bulletproof. Uh, both coming to a screen name really soon. Um, now my partner in crime, quite literally, in 20 years into his craft, has had so much more to give and so much more to tell. Audiences in America are now becoming familiar with Bulletproof, which is a testament to the staying power and global presence of my fellow comrade, um, co-creator and single biggest reason why we continue to have a thriving urban independent film and television sector here in the UK. Away from the cameras and the film sets and the studio trailers, no clock means a lot of things to a lot of people. I mean, to me, he's a really good friend. He's an inspiration. He's been a mentor. Um, and loads more I probably can't even go into here. To those of us standing here, and to many people in this room, he's been a friend and inspiration as well. To the WWE, he's a wrestling geek of massive proportion. <laughs> and to his wife and kids, he's the world. It's not every day that you get recognized for 20 years in this industry of ours at the top of your game. And as we prepare to welcome him on stage, 
I trust that he will save at this moment before cracking on in the next 20 years. Obviously, Noel has been revolutionising the industry um, for a long time, well before the Hood films, as you well know, with Doctor Who, Alfreda Simpet, one of the few British actors who starred in Star Trek and Doctor Who. So he's done loads of amazing and things. And he's made so many films that aren't just around the hood. You Indeed. know, there have been aliens, there have been athletes. Fast Girls, the Anomaly, <laughs> yes. And grossing major money at the box office. And mm -hmm. he's just completed season two of Bulletproof. Big up, Noel. I call him Clarky. He's known he, as Clarky in our crew. So w when I meet him on the 7th, what shall I address him as? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Clark? Well, Noel? if it's on stage, it should probably be Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark. or Noel. But Excellent. yeah, Clarky is our nickname for him, no if you're problem. down with him. <laughs> so Noel will be getting a great um, salutation on the 7th. Um, Ashley Walters and Will Johnson will be presenting him with his honorary award. How exciting. Only four other people have won that award, Ashley and Will being two of them. The other two being Amara Santi, who won the award last year, first Amazing. woman to do so mm. and then the very first person that won the honorary award was Richard Pryor. Gentlemen, to receive the, the, the inaugural British Urban Film Festival honorary award. To receive the 2016 British Urban Film Festival honorary award. Ladies and gentlemen, to receive the 2017 BT British Urban Film Festival honorary award. To receive the 2018 British Urban Film Festival Honorary Award. On behalf of the late, great Richard Pryor, it is an absolute pleasure to welcome on stage his daughter. It is my absolutely unadulterated pleasure to welcome on stage. Get out your seats. Get out your seats and welcome on stage. Mark. Please be upstanding as I welcome with joy onto this stage Miss Rain Pryor. <laughs> Mr. Will Johnson.
Thank you. Thank you. Who's on? Oh, it's us, it's us. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice of you. My name is Clark, and this is my assistant, Warren. Wait a minute. You got that completely back to front. I can't help that. It's these trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Urban Film Festival Honorary Award. Please rise, salute, and show your appreciation for the one and only Mr. Noel Clark. <laughs> They don't need to get everything wrong because they have people like me that have gone there and done all the mistakes and now I can say, when you go, rent the car. When you go here, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. And for me, that's what it's always been about. From day one, when I was growing up, you know, my mum was a nurse, we got, I got raised in Latimer, for those who know, Dublin Grove and, uh, I mean, I think you get in trouble these days, you can't leave your kids, but I went to work. So sometimes she put me in front of the TV and she'd go to work. And I would sit there and I'd watch TV and films and I just knew that I fell in love with it from that point. And there were no British films that I could watch. There were no British films where I saw my face on screen. And so I was like, I want to do that. That's what I want to create. Then I started watching American films. In my, in my, in my early teens, I started watching American films because, again, there was no films on screen or, or anything like that. And, you know, I used to head down to Our Price. Who remembers Our Price? <laughs> <laughs> people showing that age you know, <laughs> and you get your you've got your video cassette your vhs for those of you that were on the right side of the walls but anyone that got beat and max is dead out or, you know, your vhs and they would have the soundtrack and the poster and that was my mindset always my, mar my marketing mind was always like i want to create that i want to create that because i wasn't seeing that and the other thing i saw with the americans was the camaraderie and from day one, I tried to create a team. I tried to create a movement. I tried to create a group of actors, a group of people that you could not just succeed for, but succeed with. And 20 years later, or at least 11, 12 years later, a lot of those people still work with me. We still move forward as a unit. Some people fell by the wayside, but it's a long way to that. Right? <laughs> um, I'm very thankful for this because I feel like we need these, these sorts of things. And we're going to need Buff, and we're going to need any other award show like this until we don't need them. But that's a, that's a long time away because we still don't get the credit, respect, and the acknowledgement that we deserve as people of colour, as black people. It just doesn't happen. And so, 
I know a lot of people, some people don't turn up to things like this, but for me it was it was very important that I did. I just want to quickly talk about the two men that uh, gave me this. Obviously, Will Johnson. Will Johnson worked on my, I think it was my second job ever, and he was one of those people that showed me the ropes and told me what to do and helped me out a lot, and I always appreciate that. We used to dance at Eminem's first album <laughs> in, the, in the green room. I never meant to give you mushrooms, yeah. <laughs> I was a better dancer than you. <laughs> um, that's not true. Um, and, and of course, Ashley Waters. Um, and I'll be real with you, Ashley Waters, is, that's, that's my brother right there. And there's a long story that goes with this that I'll tell, because Ashley Waters is my brother, I love this guy. I understand. But the story is this. We met on, I think, my third job. Because Will was the second job. It was my third job. It was a short film in 19, uh, 1999, I think. Um, maybe 2000, but I think 1999. We worked together on this short film. And we met each other. had a nice day, chit-chat, blah, 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 blah. We left, and I was like, oh, he's cool. He's the guy. And I'd seen him in, in, I think I'd seen him in Storm, Storm Damage already. Um, so I was like, oh, yes, that guy, and blah, blah, blah. And then we barely spoke after that for, I would say, 15 years. And the reason was, and this is the thing that we really need to watch in our community. The reason was, as we started growing on our careers, our own people kept us apart. This is the problem we have. We didn't used to celebrate each other. We didn't used to celebrate each other. And what I love now is we celebrate each other, because we didn't used to do that. And what people would do was go, hey, yeah, that guy, he's, he's very similar to you, he's good, man, I, but I think you're better. And as I've heard later on, the same sort of thing was being said to him. Around 2007, we were kind of reconnected because I'd written a pilot called West 10 LDN, which was kind of like, uh, I don't know what it was like, but it was a community show. Had lots of, lots of actors that, that were going to be in it. It was about the black community and it was, it was, they did a pilot. And we did one scene in that pilot. And again, when we met, it was just a sort of a, an edge. And we spent the next 10 years looking at each other like, yo, across the room, seeing each other. And again, it was the same sort of thing. People would be like, yo, kid over, it's coming on, yo, top boy, kid over, uh, bullet boy, kid over, this, that. And instead of helping us embrace each other, instead of helping us work together, they were dividing us our own people. And not only that, the industry was doing a thing where if one of us was in a movie, the other one couldn't be in it. Because God forbid two black people of similar backgrounds could be in the same thing, because they were seen as the same character. And it was a problem. A few years after that, so you're talking 15 years, you now spent 15 years doing that. How you doing? Yeah, good, man. Cool. And people going, yeah, oh, yeah, this film was good, but Yours is better. Yeah, yours, yeah, his thing was good, but yours is better. And it's not that either of us buy into that bullshit, but the problem is, is like, when you don't know someone because you haven't taken the time to get to know them, you just go with what you're told sometimes. So years later, we meet at the, the Biffers. And, actually, and we end up sitting on the same table. We sit down, I'm like, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm good, you know. <laughs> and we end up chatting and he says and I don't know why he says yeah, maybe we should do something together I was like, All right. so a few months later we meet up in a coffee shop and we start devising a TV show six, seven years later so now you're looking at whole 19 years that TV show became the number one show on Sky One sold to America and over the course of filming season one, I got to know this guy. And what we realized was that we probably get on with each other more than we get on with a lot of other people in the world. But we never took the time to find that out. The message is, look what we can achieve when we work together. Instead of when we want what people have. Because envy is a funny thing, you know what I mean? 
And it's like supporting people and wanting to achieve what they've achieved is different to wanting what they have. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We've got to stop wanting what people have. Mm-hmm. It's okay to want to achieve what people want to achieve. Right now, his face is in Times Square. I want that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but I don't want to take it from him. <coughs> and I don't want him to not have it. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference. The industry now is in a place where our voices can be heard and our voices are, are being heard. There is space for everyone. But sometimes when it gets difficult, we have to look to our friends and our peers and our co-workers and we need to achieve together because that's the only way we're going to do it. And until, until the day comes when we don't have to do it, we need to keep doing it and we need to keep having things like this. And thank you very much.